It's Scott Brown here. In today's exciting episode, we look at tools that you need to not be annoying on a building site. A basic kit of carpentry tools. A lot of moving stuff happening, a lot of things happening. Guess what else happened? I painted the door. I'm recording it from this angle because then you can't see all the brush marks. He did a good job. He did a perfectly fine job. Thank you. So basically we're moving in a couple of days from this apartment. And now that I've done the construction side of the move, I can get out of here. I'll see you later, Jess. <laughs> Obviously I'm just joking. There's even more of a mess at the storage container that I've got to sort out today. All right, I gotta go. It's okay. See you later. Maybe Bye. another coat. Bye. <laughs> I had to be super ruthless and I had to get rid of a lot of tools but I kept a core amount of tools that that I think are important some of them need to go in the car with us and some of them will be packed away we've managed to build up a little village kind of lifestyle for ourselves here I'm driving, what, less than 10 minutes to the storage container. Everything's kind of handy. And this storage container in particular has been very handy. So all these units. So these storage containers are hugely popular. I get a lot of questions about them, but there's a huge waiting list for them. A lot of people, a lot of people are attracted to it because it's far more affordable than your regular office or workspace. But the thing that makes it different from just a regular storage container is that you can run a power lead across the roadway here and then you've got power and you can work in here. So here is my headache. A lot of tools still left over after being ruthless, after giving away so much. After letting go of my babies, I still have this mess. Let's have a look. Let's have a closer look. So I spent the last month or so knocking down that bench that I built when I first got this place that was storing tools and just getting things out of here. And like I said, I've got rid of a lot of tools. One of the things that I had a lot of was drop saws. I had two dual drop saws that I got for my dad, like, a decade ago and just the other day I gave him the drop saw that you've probably seen the most in this channel the 10 inch DeWalt. I also had that little Milwaukee drop saw the little battery powered one that one went to my uncle my uncle Andy who is um, gonna start a YouTube channel and as soon as he does I'll talk about it on here hanging in there how's your leg oh yeah oh. hey buddy 42 days of antibiotics mate he got a whole bunch of stuff. I gave him nail guns, I gave him that Milwaukee drop saw, I gave him some of the pack out stuff. But even after getting rid of three drop saws, I've got two left over. The Capex, the one that I pull out for special occasions, and my everyday 216 millimeter Makita 40 volt. And all these kind of boxes here, these clear boxes, are filled with just clamps and bits and bobs that are handy that I just couldn't throw out. And then you've got the air bows on top. I could get rid of these, I never use them. I still have the compressor that powers them, fills the air up in the canisters, but I don't wanna get rid of them because they no longer make these. I'd like to set them up for like a future video and just really put them to the test because these are two framing guns and that is a concrete gun. They say you don't know how much stuff you have until you try and move it. And I think that is very true. I mean, look at this thing here. Look at this! And I still obviously have my Makita 40 volt track saw. This is my regular daily use one. I've given Pido the corded track saw that I had. But even after giving away all these things, I still have a lot of stuff that I just can't let go of. So you, you get the idea, right? There's a lot of tools. And that's just here in the container. In the van, there's even more things. I don't know what this um, exciting episode is gonna be called, but let's go through a basic kit of carpentry tools that I 
would need to not be annoying for a day on a building site. That title's not going to work, is it? So circular saw. Obviously this one's a little too big. I don't think Jess will be happy with that in the car. So we'll just take this one here, the 185 millimeter circular saw. Speaking of battery tools, because I'm mainly on the 40 volt system, I'll take my little fan here. Being cordless, it definitely needs the battery charger. And nowadays, on building sites, I mainly, it depends what you're doing, but I mainly use a drill. When it comes to fastenings, I mainly use a drill. So the impact driver gets the most use, but you also need the drill driver for the pilot holes and for drilling regular holes, whether it's putting a door handle in or something like that. And the good thing about this box that Makita hooked me up with is it has all these compartments. So I can actually store all the 40 volt batteries in there. And as an extra bonus, this little Makita 40 volt pin gun. It only goes up to 40 millimeter brads, but look how compact it is, right? It can fit nicely. <laughs> well, maybe not, maybe not nicely, but there you go. Ah. It can fit in here. Honestly, so far, Jess is gonna be very impressed. Two drills, finishing them. Only one charger. All there. Isn't that amazing? Now, of course, on a building site, I count this as one tool, but it has all your basics. Your hammer. I like the titanium Vaughan Deluge hammer. The little rubber grip on it. Little nail puller bar. Folding ruler razor saw here for trimming little pieces of timber. I always like to have at least one long tip marker pen. A nail punch, regular size. An eraser, no pencil marks. A tape measure, what's this, eight meters. And a chisel, in case you need to break something apart. And the last but not least, electric measuring tool. Back. I'm glad you could join me today. Now of course, an important part of being a builder is not only building things, but, but building things and making sure they're level. Our options are limited, being in a civilian vehicle. So 0.6 is a bit short. I think we could squeeze in a 0.8. Safety is of critical importance. That's why we need earmuffs, safety glasses, and not that these are hard to come by at the moment, but a mask. I almost forgot. Not gloves, but these are important too. I almost forgot. Drill bits. And I almost forgot the nail gun, dog bar, and of course, the trusty little Pika pen. That's like the base, oh, I need the battery for the Koki gun. There's, all, there's always gonna be something, and this pile is getting big already. That's actually a much more manageable pile of tools than I would have guessed. And also, I'm going to add folding handsaw to the list. Sometimes circular saw isn't quite right for the job, handsaw can do it. A lot of people will say that all you need is a tool belt and a handsaw, if you're an apprentice for example. But um, if you want to not borrow tools from people and not be annoying on a typical building site, that's a great start. I just message Jess with a picture of those tools and see what she and see what she comes back with. Oh here we go. Yeah, it's quite a lot of volume, but if that's what you need then we'll make it work. I'm tired, <laughs> but I'm also very excited. Our apartment's empty, and now for the only thing that really matters. 
The only thing that matters is the tools, let's be honest. There you go, all packed, ready to go. The van is full, and as you can see from that footage right there, the apartment is empty, and the container. And we're ready to go to the South Island. And I've packed everything I could possibly put in here and secured it so when it's on the back of this truck that will take it to the South Island, things won't, you know, bounce around. In the next exciting episode, we go through the Auckland border. That's a sentence I never thought I'd say. Alright, exciting times ahead. Thanks for watching.